Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. In Seth Worley's last few tutorials, the focus has been on, well, wonderfully simulated violence. There's explosions and getting shot and more explosions and uh, punching. But, you know, we thought, hey, in this tutorial, let's take a break from human on human violence and get back to nature instead. So in this episode of Red Giant TV, Seth will show you how to have a swarm of flies attack your actors on screen. He'll also show you some cool tips to really help you sell the effect, including particle work, compositing, and color correction techniques. Take it away, Seth. What? Find the map, Pete. Pete! Yeah, what's going on? My life has changed. Alright, so here are our characters running through the jungle away from flies. Um, and these flies uh, can and will eat you. So here's the original footage we shot in Hawaii. Um, running around through the mud. Uh, with our actors looking ridiculous. Uh, we bring it into After Effects. We'll work with this first shot. First thing we're going to do is motion track our shot. So we're going to select our shot, click track motion, and then we're going to set the first track point to a point that is going to stay visible throughout the shot. So something kind of, you know, more toward the background. So I've got this little part right here with this weird branch thing. I'm going to have that to track, and then I'm going to go down here and click rotation. And so uh, I get a second tracking point, and I'm going to select something not too far from it, but not too close to it, so we can get a good uh, track on the rotation. So I'll probably this little spot right here. All right, so once uh, those are selected, we'll now go down here and uh, we'll hit play, and we will enjoy motion tracking. <laughs> All right, so now that that's done, our shot is now tracked. So then we're going to go to track type and select stabilize and apply. Hit OK. And now our shot is stabilized, so it's moving all about um, so that it appears that the shot is stabilized. And that looks pretty cool. All right, now this is a little trick that I learned a while ago. We're going to make that a 3D layer, uh, select a new camera, and I have mine set for 28 millimeter just because of the lens that I was using at the time was 28. So then you're going to parent that camera to the shot, and now all of a sudden, it's not stabilized anymore. But it still is. The trick is the camera is now moving with the shot. To show you uh, how it's working, I'm actually, I'll drop a null in real quick and make the null object uh, 3D for you. And then I will parent the camera. Well, first, if we watch it without the camera parented, you see the null sits absolutely still. Well, if I parent the camera to the, um, to the stabilized shot, now the null appears to move around in frame, as if the camera is now, you know, we've now match moved, the camera movement. Uh, it's only working on an X and Y level, not with Z axis, but it's enough to be convincing. So I'm going to create a new solid, call it uh, Particular Flies, and then I am going to uh, drop Particular onto it. And this layer is obviously going to become our flies. All right, so now we've got a particle emitter going on in there. So we're going to go up to our presets and actually select Swarm Flies HD. So there, we're done. Except we're not. Uh, open up emitter, go down here to Emissions Extras, and uh, turn pre-run up to 100, so that way the flies have already started uh, once the shot starts. Our emitter type is going to be Box, and then we're going to... Uh, make the uh, emitter size significantly bigger on the X, Y, and Z planes, especially Z. We want that, we want a lot of depth here. Um, so now I've got a bunch of these little spheres sitting around. And it looks really crude, obviously. So um, to help sell it, we're going to go down here and work with our particle. We're going to make the life uh, up to three seconds. Our size random up to 100. And then turn our sphere feather up just a little bit blow these guys out. Our color, it's not that significant of a change, but every subtlety counts. It's a little bit of a, a, a more closer to gray than black. So that still looks bad. So the way to, uh, you know, make it not look bad, uh, we'll open up our physics, go into air, and spin amplitude. This is how much it spins. 
how far it spins, we're going to set it to 150. So that looks good, but it looks even better uh, with motion blur on. So we'll turn motion blur on. And now, as you can see, the flies look significantly more um, convincing. All right, so once we've got that, we probably want more flies. Um, but I think we could, you know, have it spin a little more. So our spin frequency will turn up just one to seven. So it's, you know, that's the amount of time that spins. Uh, up to seven. Go up to particles. Let's. We need significantly more particles. Let's put it at 2,000. That is quite a few. In fact, maybe a little too much. Let's do 1,000. All right, so now our flies are insane and flying around. Let's actually make the size of our particle. Put it to four. That looks pretty good. Now, something you'll notice is that, you know, Walt, their character Walt, is not, like, we're seeing the entire depth of the flies over him. Where it's, even the flies that are supposed to be far away from us and behind Walt are still there in front of him. Um, and so we're going to do a little bit of trickery to kind of help sell the image. It's not going to be perfect, uh, but it will absolutely suffice. Uh, we're going to go up here. We're going to find our shot. We don't want to duplicate this because this has lots of uh, tracking information on it. Um, so we want to go up and it's gang1.mov. So we're going to go up and grab that same video file. Come down and drop it over on top. Keep it 2D. Turn off our flies for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, create a mask around Walt. And then we will keyframe this mask. And it's a very crude mask, but we keep this very crude mask. We, uh, we keyframe it to where it, it's roughly around Walt the entirety of the uh, shot. Then once that's done, we're going to duplicate that. Do the second time for when Pete enters the frame. Delete that mask so we can create a brand new one for Pete and just repeat the process that we did. And we keyframe that mask. Just repeat the entire process. And then once that's done, we have, it'll look, you know, like this. Well, we're going to select uh, our two layers. We'll hit Command-Shift-C, which will pre-compose both of these. We'll name that pre-comp Guys. And now we'll make that layer uh, 3D. And we will parent it to our original uh, video file. So now uh, that file that with that mask, the two of them are is moving with our stabilized shot in our camera. We'll bring our flies back in, and then we go into particular, and we go down to visibility, and then down to obscuration layer, which I've never said out loud before this moment, and select guys. So now that layer will obscure. Um, the particles that are behind it. So now it, it, it does a good enough job of, of at least, uh, you know, obscuring enough of the flies to sell the shot. So, again, motion blur on will really, you know, sell it. We're still missing a key element uh, of this effect. So we're going to go up here and create a new solid. We're going to call this one Flies Lens. We're going to also learn how to type. And then we're going to bring this down, and immediately before we do anything, we're going to pre-compose it. Shift-Command-C, uh, pre-compose it. And uh, then we will open up that new comp that we've created, new, that new pre-comp. And we will drop particular onto the solid. And then we will, um, just as before, we'll use a Swarm Flies HD. And then we're going to... Um, do some messing with this. First we're going to go into uh, physics and we are, you know, the flies works in an error-based uh, physics model, but we're going to change it to bounce and we're going to immediately turn our gravity up to 100. So now our flies are falling downward. We want to create a new solid now and call it floor because this is going to be the floor for our bounce physics. And we'll bring that below. We'll make it 3D and then you want to uh, rotate it on the x-axis about 90 degrees, or just because I'm in a negative 90 degrees, so the blue arrow is pointed up. It really doesn't matter, but anyway, move that down. And then we're going to go into our particle, and our particles, and in the uh, bounce option, we'll make the floor layer uh, floor. So now the flies, if we you know extend their life then you can see they are hitting the floor and bouncing around. 
Um, so actually, let's go down here and uh, our, change our collision event to stick. So when they hit the floor, they will stick. And there's a lot of flies going on there. So let's actually change the amount to like 15. And that looks really good. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to you know get rid of the visibility of our floor layer so we don't see it anymore. It's still working as a floor layer. We just don't, you know, we just can't see it. It's better now. And we're going to go into World Transform in particular and change our X rotation to negative 90 and then offset our Z axis all the way toward the camera. So now we have these guys are floating, t floating toward the camera and sticking. Now, but these are still, you know, spheres, you know, hitting the lens. And uh, so we're going to fix that. We're going to create a new composition. We're going to make sure it's 100 by 100 at two frames duration and call it Fly Particle. And uh, in this uh, comp, we're going to bring in this little uh, vector image I got from Google Image Search, which is actually is a free image uh, to use. But, you know, make sure any image you get is cleared before you use it in anything. Uh, but this is, this is a free vector image I found online of a fly, of two flies, but I'm only going to use one. So I'm going to uh, bring it in and I'm going to scale it down and move it around uh, until it's filling the frame. And then I'm going to create a mask around it so that I don't get any, you know, image from the other fly that's in, that's in this image. And, uh, once I've, you know, created that mask around this fly, looks pretty good. So now I'm going to animate this fly. I'm going to go up in the puppet tool and I'm going to select the puppet tool and I'm going to create these little uh, pins here. And then I'm going to, uh, you know, keyframes are automatically created with the puppet tool. So I'm going to go over to the second frame of the comp and move the wings up. And it's going to look really, really stupid. Uh, but it's it'll totally work for what we need it to do. So now, if we play it, it's a fluttering fly. Uh, and then, you know, you might want to... Um, you know, on the first frame, maybe move the, the wings down a little bit so it's even more of a, you know, flutter. It just totally depends. And if you turn motion blur on, you know, it looks still stupid, but better. All right. That's all we needed to do. Perfect. So now what we want to do is we want to go back. Oh, first we want to, we have this white background on the fly that we want to get rid of. And so I, uh, first, this little trick I like to use when I'm getting rid of a white background, I drop invert onto it, and then I use Null's unmult, and which gets rid of the black background. And then I drop another uh, inversion layer, invert, onto it. And uh, it goes back to being a black fly, and the white background is gone. Brilliant. All right, so we go back into our you know precomp we have of our our flies lens. We'll bring the fly particle down into here, and we're going to get rid of its visibility. And uh, now we want to go into our particles. And in particle we particle type we want to select sprite, and then go to texture, and select a layer, and fly particle, and then time sampling we want to set to random loop, and now our particle. Are these little fluttering particles, these little fluttering flies. All right, so now you want to start messing around with um, the size of the flies, the, the size, the amount, and you want to mess with the rotation so they're not all looking up. And that's basically taking a random rotation and moving it up to 100. So now they're kind of all over the place, which is cool. Uh, world, we'll go back to our world transform and offset the Z, Z, so it's Z offset, move the Z offset even closer to the camera, so these guys are sticking right up, you know, in our face. And then we want to kind of do some finagling to get it to where the flies are not sticking very much to the middle of the frame, but to the edge of the frame. And that's all about messing with the velocity and the emitter size. So if the emitter size is smaller and the velocity is a little bit larger, we're going to start, you know, seeing these flies hitting the edge of the frame more than the middle of the frame. And then, you know, you want to change the amount of the particles, just all depending on, you know, your taste, and making it look as as uh, organic and random as possible. So then we're going to go back into our, our original comp. So keep it a 2D layer, and you'll see these flies are now starting to show up on the lens, and that's pretty cool. 
and we can move that comp about to, you know to have the flies hit you know sooner or later and we can also what's great is it's a pre-comp so it's customizable we can go in and add more flies depending on how we think it needs to look um, we can customize it all you know throughout our work here so now that we've got them there we want to drop a fast blur onto the pre-comp because if the flies are hitting the lens they're going to be significantly out of focus I'm going to repeat edge pixels and then our blurriness, we turn it all the way up to 98 or 100. And so now, you know, like I said, the, the, it's a very, very subtle effect, but it totally, totally helps sell the image of the flies. Now we're going to create a new adjustment layer. And we're going to do our color correction. And not just standard color correction here. We're going to use Colorista uh, to do some fancy work here. Since Colorista is such a powerful tool, it allows us to do some stuff that uh, we would do if we were, you know, Hollywood. Um, and we're going to turn our flies layers off just so we can work with color right now. And if you'll notice, like over here, like the jungle is, when you tend to shoot in the, in the forest or in the woods or in the jungle, um, or even outside in your backyard, um, the, everything tends to look yellow, which, you know, makes me think of the famous quote, a blue jungle is always better than a yellow jungle. So we can hue the yellow to more of a green, and then we can desaturate it a little bit uh, to, you know, give it much more of a greenish, bluish, you know, technicolor jungle. Now at this point, a lot of you are probably thinking what I'm thinking, which is the, you know, classic saying that the only thing better than a blue jungle is a gray jungle. And that also is true. So what you know, we can do is we can uh, darken the yellow a bit and the green a bit over here on the second wheel, and that gives us more of like a a gray green uh, jungle which looks pretty sweet. So let's uh, create a new adjustment layer now and let's call it looks and then let's live up to that name and apply looks to the layer. Now with looks we can do uh, a lot we can you know Depends, it totally depends on the genre of the film you're working on. A lot of these looks that I've created from other projects look pretty cool on here, but I'm not going for like an over stylization here in terms of the, um, the color treatment. I actually am going to grab the Vibrant look titled Vibrant, which isn't a huge difference, but it's enough for me. And I also want to make it look a little bit like Janusz Kaminski shot the movie, so I'm going to add a little bit of a diffusion uh, just to the, I'm going to make the, the, the light, the brighter light of the image a little more diffused. I can turn up the glow, um, turn up the highlights only, so that the highlights are the only thing that are diffused. And uh, that looks uh, pretty cool, a little, a little Spielbergian. So, when we can put Colorista over the looks or under the looks, it just depends on, you know, the look that you're going for. And I think that looks uh, pretty sweet. In Colorista, I'm going to turn the density down and the exposure up a little bit to, you know, just make the image a little punchier. And uh, that looks uh, pretty cool. Pretty great. So we'll turn our flies back on. And there is our effect. So then we apply it to the uh, other shots in the sequence using the same techniques. And it ends up looking pretty cool. My life has changed. Well, I'm going to be skipping my lunch for today, but uh, well done, Seth. <laughs> if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to learn more about Seth and his work, check out his site at sethworley.com. There's great stuff there, including his web series, Adventure Now, and The Time Closet. Don't forget, you can always download a free trial of any of the Red Giant products that Seth used in this video at redgiantsoftware.com. And you can get tons of free presets for Red Giant plugins on redgiantpeople.com. In fact, Seth has been putting up a bunch of presets that he's created through his work as a director and as both a visual effects and motion graphics artist. Speaking of free, check out Colorista Free and LUT Buddy, two free color correction plugins that we're giving away for, that's right, free. You can find those at redgiantsoftware.com. Finally, I want to mention that if you're looking to keep up with what we're doing at Red Giant, whether it's a tutorial, a contest, a product release, or whatever, just follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and on our blog. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.